And yeah, I took a break here and there, but um, pretty pretty hardcore for a while. High school, I think, is when I got, really got back into it. And now I just, I got addicted to it. It's really easy to do. It's a fun pastime. I enjoy creating something with my hands, too. You can make lots of different things. I knit because I have to. I don't have a choice. I went to get business cards made one time, and I was like, I don't really know what to put on the business card. I could put business owner, I could put knitter, I could put designer, I could put teacher, I could put um, sales rep, I could put, oh, I don't know what to put on there. I said, really, what I am is the yarn queen. And the guy goes, well, just put that on your business card. Well, I started knitting when I was six, and I think I said to my mother, I want to knit, and so she cast on the 15 or so stitches and gave me a little ball of yarn and probably thought I would lose interest. Well, then I ran out of yarn, and she gave me some more yarn, and I just tied it on right in the middle, and I made mistakes, and I looped things up, and I made holes, and I added stitches, and I did all kinds of things, and I ran out of that color yarn, and then we found this lovely, lovely orange and brown yarn. It was you know, of the 60s, can you tell? And I made lots more holes, but I kept at it, and I did it, and I did it, and I did it, and I did it. And I made lots of little mistakes and things, but that just shows, and I kept it. I have three stores. I own um, a store in Greensboro called Yarns Etc., and that's been here 12 years. And then we moved to Chapel Hill, and I started another store in Carborough five years ago, and that store is called Yarns Etc. also. A year and a half ago, I bought Great Yarns in Raleigh, North Carolina. So I've got the whole Piedmont Triad sort of covered as far as owning the yarn stores in the areas. So you're going to cast on 192 stitches. You're going to I, I'm change. involved in every part of the yarn business. And so there's just a lot of ways to describe what I do. It's not a simple thing. Sometimes it's just easy just to say, oh, yeah, I knit. Yeah, I knit a little bit. This was a special fleece that I bought. It was from a, a herd in uh, Missouri. It may be Corydale, it's very soft. I have a lot of it, but I want to make it into something special. And so uh, Mary was going to help me redesign a pattern that I have. Well, <clears throat> when you decide you want to make something new, you have two different ways that you can start. You can start with having a yarn that you love and say, I want to make something out of this yarn. Or you can start with saying, I have a pattern. It also has to be um, based on what your skill level is. To do very complicated charts and very complicated color work, it takes a long time to knit a lot of other things and to make a lot of mistakes along the way. When you have a knitter who is more experienced, they get the pattern and they're not afraid to use a different yarn. They're not afraid to size it up or down. I like the way that this looks on the bottom of the sweater, but I want to change it up here and they're not afraid to do that. I knit everything really like to knit cozies for things that don't need to be cozy. I used to do scarves, but I can't stand to sit and do one thing. I have to do something that's a little more complex than just a long rectangular strip. First you need needles. You might need double pointed needles. You might need straight needles, or you might need circular needles. You can also get little coats to keep your little needles in so they stay warm. I dropped the stitch. The kit, well, the um, little package um, my partner gave me for Christmas, um, because all my needles and stuff were pretty much all over the house in various places. You have lots of other little tools that help the process along. One of my most necessary tools are reading glasses so that I can read the pattern and see what I'm doing. It's real soft, it's still got the oils in it, so it's it's real nice to work with. It keeps your hands kind of soft and, and feels really good afterwards. So. Well, when you're going to pick a project, you need to pick the right yarn for your project. I don't really, you know, go, okay, well, I want to knit this and I'm going to pick out a yarn and a color. Like, I wander around in here long enough and I just keep going back and back to the same ball of yarn and I just keep going back to it and I can't get away from it. And then, then I figure out what it's going to be. You can make a disaster sweater if you don't pick the right yarn. And the right yarn can be lots of different things. It can be the color, it can be the fiber content, it can be, it can be the texture, the size of it, and it can also be the texture of the yarn. 
this is a wool. You got two things going on here. You've got thick and thin and color. You got this boucle that's wonderful and soft and has lots of color and texture to it. Yeah, this is a plain cotton that's kind of thick and thin, a little bit harder. Lots of color here, fuzzy here. Don't be afraid to use different textures of yarn in your work. Don't be afraid to try different things because you don't know what might work better than something else. Different people have different needs for what they want to knit when they knit with color. I like it because it's lighter and I think the pattern will show up more. I'd like to knit um, a shirt, a sweater. Color is such a personal thing. Everybody loves color. And I'd like it to be hot pink. Sometimes I have to help people along and pick a color. A lot of times people pick things up and go, does this color work or does this color work? And I'll say, it's this, but you need a shade darker or you need you need the same tone, but in a different color to balance it out. Or you need a little hint of gold in that to make it just pop. And they're like, how do you know that? How do you know that? And then we have a store consensus. And then there's the socks I made for my son. He loves green, so. Um, but I've been trying to get him to experiment with other colors besides green and black. <laughs> you always buy black. Everybody likes black. Black goes with every color. Well, there's lots of techniques. The, the different needles and the different stitches that you're using all play into the technique that you do. When I teach, I, I try to tell students there's lots of different ways to do it. Don't let anybody tell you you're doing it wrong. I knit really fast because I'm not afraid if the, knit, if the stitches fall off the needle or if I knit into the stitch the wrong way or if it doesn't look right because I know I can always fix it. So I just go, 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 go. People come in and say, look at this. Look, what do I do right here? I made a mistake way back here at the beginning. I say, well, there's lots of different things that you can do. You can rip it out and start all over again. I'm not happy. That's one thing that you can do. Or you can make it a design feature. Sew it up make a little flower out of it, stitch something around it, put something in it, it becomes a design feature. People usually like the design feature aspect of the technique better. So somewhere along the line, somebody discovered that you can make, when you drop a stitch, that you can make something wonderful out of it. So a mistake doesn't always have to be a disaster. Sometimes it can be a really nice design feature. I got made to learn. <laughs> I couldn't figure it out, so asked my partner to figure it out and help me learn. He got so fed up with the books that he threw them at me. The books, the yarn, and the needles and said, here, learn. And he did, and the rest is history. Some people knit for a product. Some people see something they want and they knit it and they don't care how they get there, they just want it. I, I, why do I, I, I don't know, I, why would I not? I, I don't know why I knit. Some people are process knitters. I'm a process knitter, I do it to go through it. Some people are challenge knitters. They knit to, to challenge themselves. They pick something new and harder every time. And It's just there. It's something I've always done and will always do. And it gives me, it calms me down. It, it keeps my hands busy. Um, I create things. It gives me a sense of being able to work with color and texture. Some people knit for really bizarre reasons like gift giving and you know just the need to create something even if they don't really want it just to have it or make it I guess. A lot of times I have to just go okay well I just have to sit here and knit for just a little while and then I'll get back to doing that again it just keeps me centered and focused. When I went to college I started working in a yarn shop and, and that, that was instrumental. I just learned a lot. I went to Fashion Institute of Technology in New York City. I studied all aspects of fashion business, but I also took um, design courses and color theory. I also <laughs> worked at Women's Day Magazine in the crafts department, and I learned a lot from the editors that I worked with there as far as how the fashion business went and how the craft business went. I have to be a bit creative on my business side and I have to be a bit business-like with my creative side. I started this business probably at the low point of the last ebb and flow of knitting and there were some really lean times but I knew that I had to keep at it, I had to keep doing it because it's what I wanted to do and I wanted to bring the love of knitting to other people. 